In his cosmic form, he says, See, the moving and the unmoving are all parts of my body. Normally you won't see all this with your eyes, so I will give you divine sight. I hope you enjoyed the Gita, and I'm hoping you are seeing what um, who we really are as human beings and part of the divine at the same time and how this is really all a play and to understand that is really difficult for a human being to understand that we're just taking part in a play how do you do that and this is where Krishna teaches Arjuna again and again how do you do it when all the battles come how do you do it when everything falls apart the only way you can do it is transcend and know who we really are otherwise it's quite impossible and he's, he's very kindly uh, later on in chapter 12 today we're doing chapter 11 yoga of the cosmic vision he will tell us an it gives us lots of ways, which is really brilliant because you never have to feel lost. There's always a way out. And of course, changing the mindset, change understanding always takes time. So we need to be really patient on our spiritual growth. That's why most of spirituality was written in, um, it's almost like symbolic language. It's never in direct language because not everybody can understand it and when they do understand it they can't deal with it this is why when lots of people take drugs and and i've seen this in my life many 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 <clears throat> over the years they take drugs and as krishna das himself said in a um long time ago we were in the same uh, workshop he was doing the music and i was doing the raj and he was saying he said he started off because he took a lot of drugs and he went to India to find the truth. And he said what happened was on those drugs, he got high. He saw Jesus. He actually saw Jesus and he saw the other dimension. But then when the high went and he came back to earth, he couldn't cope. He couldn't cope with his visions. He couldn't cope with understanding. He couldn't understand any of it. He got very confused and lost all his grounding. Didn't know, understand, because the knowledge was too much. But it's just, say, they say, if you look at the sun for a long time, you get blinded, right? So chapter 11 is something like this that we are going to, to go through. That's what Arjuna is going to go through. He's going to see the sun and he's going to get, I can't, I can't. And spiritual knowledge, that's why again and again we just take ourselves slowly there's no rush you know my master always said rome was not built in a day remember that so take your time because we're talking about energy fields when we talk about spiritual knowledge and you don't want to blow yours up okay and what uh neem karoli baba told uh, krishna das who is neem karoli baba was krishna das's guru he said the only way you can get out of this is singing mantras. And that's what he did and still continues to do all these years later. So let's go to the yoga vision of the cosmic form. Sloka 1, Arjuna said, Because you are so compassionate, you have taught me the most profound mystery of the self, and I am no longer deluded so if you remember in chapter two he was so nervous and he said i can't do this my knees are shaking my hands are shaking i i am so anxious you know i'm perspiring i cannot do this that was in chapter two now while he's getting this spiritual knowledge now we're in chapter 11 and after he's getting all this knowledge he's say, seeing oh my god now that you taught me the deepest mystery of all, of all life, I am no longer deluded. I'm not worried anymore. I'm not frightened, so frightened anymore. I now understand the origin and dissolution of every creature which you have detailed for me, lotus-eyed Lord, as well as your own infinite self. So he's saying, I now understand what you're trying to teach me, the, 
you know, where we all come from. Energy and where we are all going to go back to. Energy. I now understand this. We're all going to go back to you, Lord, in the end. We are you. But still, even out after that, he still continues and says, Now I know that everything is just as you said, and I long to see your cosmic form. O Purushottama, divine Lord. That just means divine Lord. He said, Okay, I know this, and I'm not deluded anymore, but I still wish I want to see you. I still want to see you. I still want to see who you are. I want to understand. See, it's which all of us, like George Harren, Harrison said, right? I really want to see you, Lord, but it takes so long. Oh, Lord. Do you remember My Sweet yeah. Lord? I used to love that song. I, I still love it. It's a beautiful song. So My Sweet Lord, as George Harrison, it really want to see you, but it takes so long, my Lord. So that's exactly what he's saying. I really want to see modern people do the same, right? Lord of all yogis. If you deem me strong and steady enough to behold it, then I beseech you to show me your immortal form. So if you really think I'm ready, please, please, I really want to see it. So can you show me if you think I'm strong enough? The blessed Lord responded, Behold, Arjuna, you are about to see the multitude of my divine forms in their millions of colors and variations. Look for all the celestial powers and the spirits of nature. Adityas. Adityas are gods of light. What I told you about those lights, you see if you stare long enough at the sky, you'll see millions of light. <laughs> These are the gods of nature. Vasu. Now these are radiant spirits of matter. They live in matter. And so many wondrous things. Arjuna, never before revealed. Never shown anybody, but I'm going to show you. Look at my body, Arjuna. You will see the entire universe there. All that moves and all that seems to be unmoving, as well as anything else you wish to see. And all are part of the same, which is me. So he's about to show Arjuna everything. But you cannot see my cosmic form just with your physical eyes. I will give you spiritual vision. Now behold my Yoga Ishwara. Now Yoga Ishwara means uh, when you practice yoga, the practice of yoga, and you can see the God in matter. You start to see the God in a form or in matter because Ishwara is the God of all gods as Sri Patanjali tells us. The first Brahman and all teachers come from that teacher. Okay, so and that's why we do yoga to, to yoga is to connect, right? Nine. Sanjaya spoke. After saying this, your majesty, Lord Krishna, the supreme master of yoga, revealed to Arjuna his cosmic form as the Lord God. Now, Sanjaya spoke. Uh, Sanjaya is from chapter one, for those who haven't been following from the beginning. And he was... Um, King Dhritarashtra was the father of Durodhana who started this war, okay? So because the father was blind, he asked a mystic called Sanjaya who could see beyond, he was psychic, so he could see the whole war being fought without being there. So he is relating all this to the blind king who cannot be at the war. So that's Sanjaya that they're talking about there. But that you meet Sanjaya in chapter one, very in the very beginning. Okay, so just that you don't get confused. 10. Everywhere, everywhere, millions of faces, eyes seeing everything, countless mouths, all speaking wonders, and visions too numerous to describe. All this he in a bejeweled 
heaven with infinite upraised arms revealing miraculous powers, a divine weapon in every hand. And here's, he's just saying, you can see hundreds of mouths, all beautiful, all beautiful in, in, in Krishna's form. And each one with some kind of weapon or instrument. And if you see the Lord Shiva Nataraj, which I have behind me, let me just get it. And if you see most of the gods or goddesses, they've all got something in their hands. Let me show you here. And there, he's got a conch, a mace, a drum, all representing mantra, etc. So I'm not going to go into the explanation completely because it will take a long time. But this is basically what he's saying. You are seeing all these wonderful people in a bejeweled heaven. And this is why in uh, Hinduism, particularly, and that's why many people are so drawn to it, because it believes, the actual religion believes truth is one parts so of many. It wasn't meant to be made into a religion. That's why there's so many forms of God, more than, I don't know how many thousands of gods you have in India, to represent a different energy in us, right? But you will see that they're all adorned with jewels. They're all adorned with jewels. They've got diamonds, they've got emeralds. They, that's why we're so attracted to stones. Because they carry an energy. They do carry an energy, a power, you know. And people who study crystals and gems will tell you that. So gems and crystals do affect. Okay, you can. That's why people love crystals, right? And I love amethyst because something about amethyst makes me happy. It takes, and you know, amethyst is meditation stone, right? So, but I've always loved it even before I ever studied these things, since I was a little girl. And why do so many yogis love purple? If you look at the higher chakras, you think about it, every yogi I know loves purple. <laughs> 11. Clothed in mantles of light <clears throat> and garlands of blossoming heavens, the infinite, wondrous, resplendent one facing everywhere simultaneously in the presence of divinity and indescribable fragrance. So, you know, they talk about smell of roses. Mm. Uh, you've all heard of that? Have you smelt roses sometimes? <gasps> or flowers in a room? Or a sudden beautiful scent? Right, uh, I can tell you another story. Would you like another story? Because this is not, this is for real, okay? Oh, and it's to do with your friend Joni. Mm. Uh, many, many years ago, I was in Gibraltar in my office, and somebody, um, well, Anyway, forget about the office. Lots of things happened that day. So I'll just go to, I had to give a talk at six o'clock. And uh, one of Michelle's friends, uh, Joni, was there and she's quite blind, right? And so she was sitting in the audience. And as I was walking into the hall, she said out loud to everyone, Oh my God, can you smell the roses? And can you feel the drops of water? So, now I go back to my office. Prior to that, I was seeing a client and she walked into my office and she said to me, oh, I'm a psychic and I have to give you so many messages. I know you. I came to see you for me, but I can't because they're not letting me and I'm going in my office room. Who's not letting you? <laughs> She could see what I couldn't see. She said, then she described a man and she described a little boy. And then she said, every time, this is what she told me, you walk in the room, they're with you, and they bring in the smell of roses and you will feel water on your skin. Now, how did Joni know about that conversation? So, I was like, Joni told you, right? And, and I was like, oh my God, that particular day was one of the days I was thinking, I've been teaching for eight years. <laughs> I'm done, you know, everybody's so clever. I've taught what I know, I don't know too much. I've taught everything, the same teaching is going on. <laughs> and maybe it's time I let them just look after the center and go. But I guess my answer was not yet. 
That was my answer, not yet. So, so this is the smell. So since then, I've met many people who tell me, it's really lovely. Oh, no, I tonight just felt some water. And I go, yes, <laughs> I smell roses. And I tell them this story. Uh, 12. If a thousand suns were to blaze in the sky at the same time, their splendor would be something like the radiance of the Supreme Self. So, a thousand suns. So, can you see God? A thousand suns. <laughs> Thirteen. There in the body of the God of Gods, Arjuna saw the manifold universe in its entirety, with its many levels and divisions, all resting in their essential oneness. So there, all this is going on, and Arjuna is seeing it all in this one person, Krishna. Now, many, many years ago, and you know, he said you have to have the eyes to see this, I must have been about six years old or five years old. I remember looking out in the sky and seeing like a transparent body and everything, mountains, trees, people in that body. I was very young, but I remember seeing it and I'm thinking, this, what am I seeing? Now, and then I stopped. I actually got scared, right, many, many years ago. And then throughout my life, I was looking for that, what did I see as a child? Because you know, children before the age of seven, they're still connected, right? It's only after the age of seven, we lose much of it. So, and of course, you're purer before you're young. Then when you get seven, eight, you get a little naughty, you do, your know, mind is a little disturbed. <laughs> So, and I remember, and when I read this chapter, which I'll continue with you, I went, oh my God, we are all atoms of God's body. We are all atom cells. That's why when so many are sick, the world gets sick. When so many are better, the world gets better. Okay? 14. Arjuna's hair stood on end, amazed and ecstatic. He fell in adoration before the Lord, pressed his palms together near his heart, and spoke. 15. O oh Lord, I see all the devas in you. Now, what are the devas? The devas are the gods and goddesses. Your body contains every living creature and all levels of evolution. So, all levels of evolution means plants, animals, reptiles, the whole lot, right? And the world in its manifold ways. Even the creator Brahma, seated on the lotus and surrounded by the ancient sages and celestial serpents. So he says, I can even see the creator. You know, he said, Brahma is the creator, the, the, that original sun that brings forth from itself the creator, Ishwara or Brahma, you call it. And he's seated on the lotus. And I see the same ancient saints and celestial serpents. 16. I see you embodied in an array of countless forms wherever I turn. So now he's seeing this everywhere. It's like having a film in front of him arms, bodies, mouth and eyes, on and on and on to infinity. You are everywhere. You have no end, no middle, no beginning. O oh Lord of the universe, your body is the entire cosmos. There he sees everything in, in our Lord Krishna. And now I see you crowned with precious gems and holding a mace, a mace and a discus in his hand, in the midst of a light so radiant that I can hardly stand it. You are like a fiery sun blazing out in all directions. This is what he's seeing. 18. 
You are what is to be known, the supreme imperishable reality. That is our work, to know this. You are the treasure house of the universe, the refuge of all creatures, and the eternal guardian of Dharma. Dharma is timeless wisdom, wisdom. Now I understand you are Purusha, the ancients of ancients. You are Purusha. What does the word Purusha mean? Soul. Yeah, the soul, the spirit, the soul. Purusha nas, the Atman in us. It's another word for Atman. You reach everywhere. There's no place that you start or end, nor middle either. You wield infinite power. The sun and the moon are your eyes. Your mouth is a burning fire that heats the whole universe. From heaven to earth, every quarter is full of your presence. O oh, Mahatman, Supreme Self, the three worlds tremble before your terrifying and marvelous cosmic form. The three worlds tremble. What are the three worlds? Uh, Ambur, Bhuvaswaha, Ambur, that's the physical, astral, and causal, which is the spiritual world. Everything in the world is trembling before this power. 21. It is true, the host of heaven, gods, angels, higher beings, actually enter into you, some so overcome, they extol you and bow before you and their palms press together respectfully. And that's why we do Namaste. Because where is God? You tell me, where is God? Everywhere. Correct. And this is to remind us. And that's why the palms are together. Namaste. Host of sages and saints spontaneously praise you in song sublime and speaking for you are saying peace and peace to all. Say it with me. Peace, peace and peace, peace to, to all. all. Can you see that? Angels and saints and sages are all chanting in the heavens. Peace and peace to all. When gazing upon you, even the celestial beings of all levels are astonished and overwhelmed. So even those that we call angels that live in the other world are astonished. They're overwhelmed because the presence is just, wow, amazing presence. 23. The whole universe trembles, almighty Lord, on seeing your infinite strength and in the presence of your awesome form of countless eyes that see everything, that's why they say God is everywhere, that see everything, and infinite arms, legs, bodies, and fearsome mouths and bad teeth. And now he's seeing scary mouths and bad teeth. Lord, too, I am shaking. He can't, now he's seeing the other side of God, the bad mouth and the teeth. And this is why in every, like you see the Buddhist tradition. Have you been to Buddhist temples all over the world? Well, they're very interesting. They also have a God with the teeth. Have you seen them? Even in the Catholic tradition, they say the fallen angel. But actually came from God, right? So... It's interesting when you read these texts and you read different texts of different traditions and religions, you see the language is, wow, it's nearly all the same but told in different ways. Like host of angels, even in the uh, Christian tradition, Alleluia, Alleluia, you know, it's just this chanting and we say Shiva, 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 Shambo, we're celebrating and also they are celebrating. Right? It's everywhere, this celebration. And that takes us in song to the higher places so that we can raise above the negative side of the divine form. Seeing you like this, taller than the sky, your mouths open and blazing 
while waves of colors emanate from you, your eyes everywhere burning into me like fire. My heart is pounding with fear. Oh, Vishnu, he calls him Vishnu because it's godly beyond manifestation. Oh, Vishnu, I have lost my courage and peace. <laughs> Remember he asked for this vision. Now he got scared. He got the vision, but he's got frightened. He's not ready, so ready for it, right? When I look into your terrible jaws with fearful tusks, I see the fires at the end of time. I've lost my bearings and don't know where to turn. O oh Lord of the God, who upholds the whole universe, show yourself merciful. I don't want to see this side of you anymore. I don't want to see the bad, right? Which is like us on earth. I don't want to see the bad. Show me the good side again. I want to see that. 26. I see all the sons of Dhritarashtra and all the earth's warriors, kings, Bhisma, Drona, Karna, as well as our own mighty warriors. So now he's seeing all Bhisma, Drona, Karna, all his family members that he's fighting against. Okay? It's the battle. So suddenly he's seeing them all in Krishna's form. All of them helplessly caught up in a torrent that's rushing into your terrible jaws and tusk. It's horrible. Some are being crushed between your teeth. The head smashed to powder. Oh my God. So what he's seeing now is fast forward the future that all these people that he's going to fight with are going to be crushed. He's seeing into the future. 28. Like a raging torrent roaring to the ocean, so are these warrior heroes rushing pell-mell into your blazing jaws of death. So now he's calling them warrior heroes because they're all great warriors and they are all falling into your mouth. Now I understand that all creatures like moths to a flame are rushing headlong into your gaping jaws of death. In other words, now I understand that every creature is rushing towards their death because every creature is going, you tell me what, yeah, what, die. going to die. Remember, Carson, life is short, death is sure. So he's now seeing that no matter what, everybody's going to run towards death one day, all of us, there's no escape. Your mouths are filled with fire. Wherever you turn, you lick your lips. On every side, you devour all lives. So now he's seeing him as the god of death. Everybody dies in the end. Oh, Vishnu, your radiance has set the universe on fire. You are so bright that it's, the world is on fire. It's on fire. 31. O oh God of such terrifying form, Supreme Lord, you who existed before anything else, I prostrate before you. Be merciful. I must know who you are, what you do, and why you do it. Okay, now I want to see your merciful form. I want to know why, who you are and why you do this. The blessed Lord answered, I am all-powerful time destroyer of the worlds and now I have come to devour this world whether you fight or not all the warriors of the opposing army gathered here will surely die in other words they are unrighteous so I have come to devour them I have come they will surely die therefore Arjuna Stand up and be famous. Conquer your enemies and enjoy the kingdom uncontested. I have already slain the enemy, warriors. You are to be my instrument, Arjuna. You see, the war, the, do you remember in the earlier chapters, uh, uh, Lord Krishna tells Arjuna, Wherever there is unrighteousness in the world, I will re reincarnate over and over again to protect that which is good. 
So what he's saying now that the world is so ridden with evil that don't worry, the war has to be fought to get rid of the evil, right? You have to get rid of it. Who, who are the instruments? We are the instruments. So in this case, he's chosen Arjuna as the instrument. Arjuna is the instrument. So he said, look, I've chosen you as an instrument. So stand up and be brave, whether you do it or not. It's done. All you have to do is follow your part in the play. And I've given you a brilliant part. Because of your good karma, you have got this good part to save the nation. So that is your job. And have you seen Lord of the Rings? Yeah. And they choose Frodo to be the bearer of the ring because he's... And Frodo, Frodo was just an ordinary average chap, right? So he, he was... And yet he had such a great, great job to do. And so the same way um, God chose uh, Arjuna because he didn't choose Arjuna, Arjuna's eldest brother, Yudhishthira, who was so good and so good and so good, no good for the job, <laughs> can't do the job. He didn't choose his younger brother, Bhisma, Bhima, <coughs> because he was too strong and aggressive. You know, although he could fight well, but he was too aggressive. Didn't choose him for the job. He chose Arjuna because Arjuna was just average, not too good, not too bad. So he chose somebody actually at average. And Lord of the Rings is really based on that. They chose somebody average. That's why I say you never know where the power comes from. Do you know? Somebody average sometimes is the one that carries the power. So... This is, um, he's saying, I've chosen you for my, as my instrument. And we all say St. Francis's peace, right? Lord, make me a channel of your peace. Where there is darkness, let me bring light. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. Yeah, you got it. You know it well. Very good. Keep remembering. Go ahead and slay Drona, Bhisma, Jagadratta, Karna, and all the other brave warriors whom I've already doomed to die in this battle. Don't worry or be afraid. Just stand and fight and you will conquer your enemies in battle. He says, don't worry, it's already done. You're not, don't feel guilty because they're your family. Because don't forget in the beginning, Arjuna didn't want to fight. Why? He goes, Drona is my teacher. Bhisma is my grandfather. These are my brother-in-laws that I'm fighting. But they're the ones that are unrighteous. So he said, you have no guilt. Don't feel the guilt. This is, I have given you this job to save your nation. So you are not killing for the sake of killing. You are killing to what? Protect the righteous. We have, somebody has to do it, <laughs> right? Somebody has to do it. And we're human beings, so one person has to be chosen. 35, Sanjaya said, after hearing these words of Krishna, Arjuna began trembling uncontrollably. He pressed his palms together over his heart, bowed before the Lord, and with a choked voice he said, Krishna, it is perfect that the world showers praises on you. Before you all evil flees to the furthest corners of the cosmos, while hosts of saints and sages bow before you. How could they do anything else but worship you, Mahatman? You are beyond everything else. You are the origin of all, even Brahman, God the Creator. O eternal Lord of the gods, you are the abode of the entire universe and you are indestructible. You are existence and non-existence. Yet in the same moment, you are that supreme state beyond them both. So you are manifest and you're not manifest. And at the same time, you're beyond it all. In Sri Patanjali, when we talk about in Book 1, Sutra 16, we talk about supreme non-attachment. 
it means going beyond the goodness. So going beyond the saints and sages, going beyond the evil and transcending it all. And that's what he's seeing. He's saying, you go beyond all of this and we transcend it. You are the Adideva, the original one, the most ancient Lord, the supreme resting place and the refuge of the universe. You are where we can rest. When we rest in the saints and sages, we rest in you. You are that resting place. You are awareness itself, the knower. And still, you are all that is known. That's why we meditate, to know the knower. You are the ultimate home. A great being of infinite shapes and forms, you pervade the whole universe. You are the Lord of the wind, by you, Lord of death, Yama, Lord of fire, Agni, the Lord of water, Varuna. You are the moon and the creator of all that is born. Ultimately, you are the great grandfather of all beings. A thousand times I salute you and respect bow before you. Wherever I turn, it is you. To my left, to my right, I bow before you. In front, behind, my humble prostrations. You are boundless and your power is incalculable. We can't count. We can't, you can never know God's power. So, you know, you just can't. You permeate all that is in truth. Everything is you. 41. Sometimes in the past, my Lord, due to my ignorance and carelessness and out of affection for a dear friend, I presumptuously addressed you casually. Oh, friend, I would call, hey, Krishna, not realizing who you really are. When we were playing or resting, and this is where he's talking about the avatar, you know, uh, God coming down as man. So Krishna is the avatar, like you have with Buddha, Lord Jesus, okay? These are, they have to take a human form in order for us to understand. Otherwise, we cannot understand. And for me, Swami Satchitananda. When we were playing or resting, sitting or eating, alone or with others, I must certainly have been rude to you in my manner that was too familiar. However, I have been disrespectful, eternal Lord. I implore you to forgive me. And now he's seeing, oh my God, I've always thought of you as my friend and you know, my cousin, because they were cousins. I might have been rude, etc. But now I know who you really are. Forgive me, forgive me, please forgive me. You are the father of the world and all that is in it including the animate and inanimate. You are the supreme guru. Certainly the whole world should adore and worship you in all three realms, O mighty one of unparalleled strength. Nothing is your equal. I think you all understood that. 44. Gracious Lord, I humbly bow before you and implore you to forgive me. Like a father forgives his child, like a friend forgives his friend, like a lover forgives his beloved. I am thrilled to behold you as no one else has, but my mind is disturbed. I am terrified by your cosmic form. So he goes, I'm really, really glad I've seen you, but I'm terrified mm -hmm. by your cosmic form. It's like too much, it's too much for me. O oh God of gods and abode of the cosmos, mercifully show your more familiar form to me again. So I can't see this vision of you. Please show me as, as Krishna, my friend, you know, because that's easier for me. I desperately want to see you as you were before, crowned with light and not with thousands of arms, displaying your powers with, with four holding the mace and discus. He said, I want to see your simple form. <laughs> I don't want to see all this stuff. You just show me the good side of you kind of thing. I don't want to see the negative side of you. The blessed Lord said, through my yogic power, Arjuna, you have been blessed to see my cosmic form, which is radiant, omnipresent, and eternal. 
great hero. No one else but you can see me this way. Not those who studied sacred scriptures, nor those who perform ritual offerings, nor givers of charity, nor those who follow all the prescribed religious observances, not even the ascetics who embrace austerities. What? So what are we supposed to do if none of us can see him, right? There is no need for you to be afraid or confused any longer by looking at my awesome form. There's no need to be confused. Let your heart be glad and let your fears disappear. I will reveal myself to you again as I was before. Then Sanjaya said, after saying this, Krishna reappeared to him in his gentle, more familiar aspect and immediately calmed Arjuna's troubled mind. Arjuna said, Now that I see your gentle human form, my lord, my mind is tranquil and I am returned to normal. The blessed lord said, It is certainly hard to see me as you have. Even the devas, the goddess and goddesses, long to see my cosmic form. Though these produce much merit, the study of sacred scriptures, practice of austerities, gifts of charity, and even self-sacrifice will not earn anyone the vision you have seen. <coughs> So he said, these, all these things give you much merit. Do them. They merit. They give you merit. But that does not give you the vision. Now, what will give you the vision? Only by constant and steady devotion can I be seen in my true cosmic form and known Arjuna and realize. Only by constant and steady devotion. 55. Whoever desires me above everything else and thus completely devotes himself to me and thus offers me all his actions and thus sheds all personal selfish attachments and feelings of ill will towards any creature, Arjuna, that person surely enters into me. So he's saying by devotion, by all your devoted actions and no selfish attachments, I don't wish anybody bad, only those people can surely enter me. Do you see? Enter me. So we're already there. We just have to enter by doing this, these practices of devotion and kindness and goodness. Not by austerities, not like starving yourself, you know? Uh, not by flag, you know, what's the word? Flag duration, right? Yeah, not by hitting yourself, not by, you know, sitting in meditation for 30 hours, you won't see me. But by just devotion and love, you will see me. Thus ends the 11th discourse of the Bhagavad Gita, the science of yoga. So, slow and steady wins the race. You see, even Arjuna, who was got the vision, it was too much. So, you know, when we say go beyond good and bad, we have to transcend good and bad. It's very hard for the human mind. So, you have to understand that good and bad exist in this world. They do exist. But we follow the good world. It doesn't mean just because you follow the good wolf that the bad will disappear. It's here. It's part of this world. There will always be this. But our job is to praise, 
peace and peace be on earth. May peace be on earth. May all men be at peace, like those angels, like those sages, all bowing in front of the Lord to create this energy. And of course, this is what's happening now. People are, but there's too much anger. We don't need anger. We need to pray for peace. We need to pray for peace so that we get that energy of peace on the world, to the world. With anger, we cannot bring peace, right? My master always used to say, fire and fire makes a burning, blazing fire, and you all get burnt. And like the eyes of the sun, he's going to burn all the enemies, right? They're going to go. But it has to be a process. So during that process, stay strong, stay steady, Fill your heart with devotion and understand that all is divine and all this has to happen for a reason. It's there for a reason. And if you look at astrolog astrology, etc., which I'm not, it talks about the age of Aquarius, the dawning of a new age of light. And we always know that before there is light, there always has to be what? Yeah, there has to be dark before there is light. And if it's not dark enough, guess what humans being do? do we do? We forget. <laughs> when do we pray the most? You tell me. When it's the darkest. <laughs> then we say, no more, no more. Like, like Arjuna, no more, no more. I don't want to see this evil anymore. Show me peace. This is what's happening to our world. Do you see? If you see it in that light, no more, no more, no more. I don't want to see any more of this. Let's just pray for peace. Let's just pray for peace. Let's just pray for peace. People will be sent to organize those peace things. It's just the way it works. We just have to sit back and do our job and do it as best, not panic. So, I drew a panic twice in this book, he had two panic attacks. The first time when he had to go into the war, okay, which was scary, he didn't want to fight. The second time when he saw the vision of God. Hmm? It's because it was too much. So that's why we always say no high highs, no low lows. And just do good and be good. That's what all the masters said. Simply, of course, if you do a ritual, it makes you feel good, you feel happy, you're in the presence of God. But it's not done in devotion, it's worth nothing. But if it's done in devotion, then brilliant. Do it that way. Prayer should be sincere. Then do whatever ritual you want because he gave us the secret, right? He said, none of those. And if you do charity to show off, you cannot get anywhere. But charity, because it's useful in a form of caring for another human being and in uplifting lives, it is great. It has a lot of merit. Hmm? But it will not take you there if you think you want to be famous through it. Do you see the devotion, the real love for what you do has to be behind every action because everything is divine. So when you put love into whatever you do, then you're constant, constantly thinking of God, constantly. Whether you're cooking, uh, looking after people, brooming, uh, on the computer, wow, this is a magic a computer because with it I can get lots of information I can I can you know praise be to God because I can get in touch with all of you people who are not here with me in this room today you're not here with me and yet I can see you all do you see so God is divine you look at all praise be praise be to all that is good but too much of this computer and what will happen to me my brain my brain will burn do you see so everything in moderation, everything in moderation. And this, and that's why he chose Arjuna. He was moderation, a normal human being who was a brilliant warrior. That's all, he was chosen. And we're all instruments like that. 